actually um, am at my mom's restaurant. And I figured because the movie takes place in a couple of bars that I would just post up in my mom's restaurant bar. Uh, so oh, nice. It was a it was an ideal setting, and I get to manage this. And today's the one day we're closed, so everything just fell into place for uh, for this. That's um, great. Yeah. Okay. So I'm recording now. Um, cool. For our viewers out there, my name's Thomas. I'm with For Real Movie News and Reviews, and I am currently on the line uh, with director Cody Callahan and actor R. J. Mitty uh, to discuss their new film that just premiered at Fantasia called uh, The Oak Room. Um, and yeah, welcome guys. I'm glad that you're able to, to have this call with me today. Thanks yeah, for having thanks us. Thanks for having us. <laughs> for sure. Um, so, world premiere, guys. Uh, how does that feel with this, with, this, uh, with this movie that you guys have? Great. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I want to, Cody, uh, tell me a little bit about, for our viewers, what this movie is about, because I've tried explaining it to friends, and, <laughs> and I don't think I succeed uh, that well. So can you give us a breakdown on what The Oak Room is about? So to be perfectly honest, I, uh, I have definitely not perfected a pitch for it. <laughs> and when, when we got the script, just a little backstory, when we got the script, um, I'm working, uh, I was, uh, I had a deal with a studio called Breakthrough Entertainment here in Toronto. Um, and I told them about this script and they kind of, they were sort of like, what? Wait, so what's it about? I'm like, it's a guy and he's telling a story and it's stories within stories, but trust me, you just, you got to read the script and, and then we'll discuss it. And it took me a while to actually get them to, to read it because it's really not an elevator pitch movie. And a lot of the other movies that we've done sort of usually start, like the development usually starts with an elevator pitch. Um, this one was super unique. Um, so I don't, it's, it's like, it's a story about family and fathers and sons. And it's a, it's a who's who and who's telling the truth. It's, it's a movie about stories within stories. I don't, I don't like, I still don't have like that, and that great it's one. also Cody. It's also it's it's also a play movie. You know, there's a lot yeah, of, true. A lot of a lot, it was adapted to be a movie. It was an originally a play. And you know, I, what I say, it's about a guy telling a story of a guy walking into a bar, telling a story about a guy who walked into a bar. I was <laughs> heard of a story that about a guy who walked into a bar, and um, you know, I, I look at this as a psychological thriller with an almost supernatural eerie vibe to it like if it's not because there's not like monsters or anything other than the humans um but it has this kind of like allure to it this is ominous presence and it's it, it's a real story it's a story-based movie that you don't always see and you see a lot of movie-based stories and um and this is the other way around that is that is probably the perfect way to put it um a story-based movie because that's what captivated me about this film I, I i gotta put it out there i really really love this film it just had me on the edge of my seat the entire time like wondering what's going to happen keeping up with the narrative and the narrative within the narrative and the narrative within that narrative um and i actually think it's very interesting how the, there's one story being told from the end and then to the beginning. And then within that story, someone telling a story from, from the beginning into the end. And so it seems complicated, but you actually did a really, really great job um, keeping everything in order and making everything make sense uh, in the end. Um, Cody, this is a very, this seems like a very different project from what you've directed in the past. Um, can you tell me about how directing the Oak Room is, is uh, compares to how to other projects that you've directed um yeah so i mean i i think i i sort of said it um in, in the very first press release but it kind of felt like i've made a you know i've produced a bunch of movies written some and directed you know a few before this one but this really felt like my first film again and so and it wasn't that it it wasn't that like i was learning all this all these new things because you kind of you know, after directing movies, you sort of, you learn tricks and you learn ways to talk to actors and to share back and forth. And, 
you learn new ways to collaborate and stuff like that. But this one was, it was so dialogue and character driven and it didn't, there was nothing else to rely on. So it was all performance based. So the casting and, and, you know, I got, obviously I got really lucky with, with all the casting and working with RJ and Peter as the, as sort of the two catalysts that drive the whole movie. But, um, you know, I mean, every, every day was, uh, was something I've never, never done that much of. Cause usually like a lot of the films that we do are horror. So you spend a lot of time, you know, working on gags and scares and, and, you know, perfecting the camera moves and the timing for things like this, where this was really like shooting a play. So we would rehearse a whole bunch. And then we would do, I think we did a, we did a scene with RJ and Peter where I think it was a 15 minute plus take. So you start, 30. you start watching <laughs> and you start letting like all the actors sort of start getting into it. And it, and, and it goes from sort of, as the scene goes and they, they start getting lost, but sort of as a viewer, you getting, you get lost. So you have to sort of remember all your notes for 15 minutes, but at the same time, it sort of changes their performances as well, because they're completely in it. And none of their cameras, like we tried not to get the, the camera too close. So we used a lot of longer lenses and really let the actors just sort of do their thing. So, I mean, it was completely different than anything I've done before. And um, like, I, I don't know, I, Again, I'll, I'll sort of do anything that sort of excites me from the script, but I'd love to do more movies sort of like this, if yeah, I can. No. In, in that regard to like this, this script feeling like one of your first projects, like it, it really had that like that that spark, you know, when you're like, oh my God, this is happening, this is growing, these things are happening, oh my God, this is cool, this is fun. Like we're, we're like, we like our work. Not many people yeah. say that and, and actually like mean it. And for the Oak Room, everyone was 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 there. They were they were they wanted the to see the same thing succeed. Everyone had a clear vision of what this looked like. And the environment itself, yes, it was a very uh, a very standard and and I, I'm trying to think of a a better word than stagnant because stagnant's not a, a good word uh, stationary like, i would say it's probably yeah stationary but it just kind of had that that room that that yeah, just it was place. just the room and you got drawn into that room and it just made you be in that space and you couldn't go anywhere and it it allows you to really explore not just what's in your vicinity but what's not in your vicinity and working with peter was great um i, I didn't get to work with any other actors really <laughs> but um but working with him was was really a, a treat and and it was fun it was unique and yeah the some of the takes were 15 20 minutes long but the scene some of the scenes were 8 to 12 to 13 pages long and and it's more of not solid dialogue as it was these moments of of tension that that pulled these two characters. So in regards to that, when it comes to filmmaking, that's a rarity. That's you don't get that when when you're making movies. You you may have in the past, but not now. People want snapping. They want to hurry. They want it to cut quick and move fast and chop chop chop. Every scene is a is two minutes but you have 30 cuts in that two minute span and this was nothing like that this was long long focus long pulls long hard pushes and things that were like avant-garde-esque that just really challenge you as as an actor as a filmmaker to to take this little crumb and turn it into this grandioso experience yeah. And I think you guys did such a great job with that. Like I said, I, I very much enjoyed the film for a lot of the reasons that you're saying, where it is, it's longer scenes with, with uh, a lot of exposition and, um, and, and really the style and the tension that happens, it's great. Actually, so in my review, I said it's, it's like, um, it's almost like Inception for storytelling, just kind of with the layers that happens. Is that, do you guys get that, um, that, that feedback or that kind of uh, uh, description when people talk about the movie? Just now, yeah. but I like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've heard that. I've heard that sort of once before, and it's just—I mean, obviously, it's 
as you said it again, it's like, I feel like every time I go to explain this story, somebody's like, oh, so it's like really confusing and intricate. And I'm like, no, 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 it's not, it's not. <laughs> it, it, you know yeah. what, it, it, you, it really has a story. That's the difference is that you can have a lot of in-depth, intricate workings of cutbacks and flash forwards and flashbacks, but you, it holds its baseline. It holds its arc and all the characters arc. And that's, that's a once, it's lightning in a bottle. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think, uh, RJ, um, tell me more about your role uh, specifically, because if we're, if we're comparing this to Inception, this is uh, uh, this Inception for storytelling, you're on the first level, right? Tell me about your role and how you connected with that character. Uh, I connected with him as, um, you know, I, I grew up in, in a small town, um, too, and, and, and left and traveled and did my, my life and lived my thing and came back to some things that weren't the same and people weren't the same. And so in regards to that, it, that's kind of how I related to those characters. And, and for me, I, I, I tried to create as much of my character in basis of reality versus fiction, but at the same time, just absorb the space and allow the story to, to guide my decisions. And it was a well-written story. It was a well-laid out story. And the way that we shot it was really like a dance. So it was, it was, it was fairly choreographed to a degree when it came to placement and timing of, of where you stood to where you were. So um, in regards to that, it was just being able to be fluid and, and fit where those, those blocks needed to be. But, um, but everyone likes a dingy bar in the middle of a winter, in, in the middle of a snowstorm. So I don't it mind. It certainly is. It's a, it's a great setting for, for this story, uh, obviously. Um, you know, RJ, in preparing for this, I watched a, uh, an interview with you where you were talking about the challenges of being uh, an actor with a disability and the box that that, could, that, that tends to put you in uh, sometimes. Um, and you were talking about how you want to take on more able-bodied roles, and and here you are with the Oak Room in this able-bodied role and totally killing it. Like that was you, you nailed that part so well. Can you tell me what that means to you um, in how your career is progressing? Just another day in the life. Um, yeah, no, I you know it, it's hard when when you you may have an invisible disability or whatever it may be, but people still want you to bring that to the forefront and, and highlight that and ex explore that, but really exploit that. And um, for me, when, when doing the Oak Room, that, that, facet, that facet of this is just a normal person. So mm -hmm. having an opportunity not to like have to worry about putting emphasis on how I walk or how I talk or how I have to carry myself or using a wheelchair, using a crutch, whatever it may be that the show is calling for um, is always great. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a big advocate for inclusion in the arts and media. I think everyone should have um, the opportunity to, to feel represented in mainstream society. And, you know, the other side of that coin is I just want to work. And that's what it really comes down to is, is in any capacity, what stuff like the Oak Room, I prefer, yes. But, but it's really just continuing that grind and putting yourself forward and, and utilizing that tool. You know, having cerebral palsy is, is having a disability is a opportunity it, and it is an advantage. People assume it's a disadvantage. But for me, it's knowledge, it, it's a power, it's, it's understanding of not just myself, but, but the, the human condition that we have. So that carries over to a lot of my works. But when it comes to just being able to, to not have to worry about that and focus on the character itself and, and the scenes and the words, and it, it's nice to, to not have to have a limp. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um... For sure. Hey, so Chris, um, you talked a little bit about the um, the different ways that you went about filming this project. Um, I want to know what was the biggest challenge in adapting the play to a movie format. 
Um, so it's funny because because the the biggest challenge was after I read because I had first read the uh, Ari Millen who plays Michael in the in the movie. He played Michael in the play as well. So he oh, actually brought me, yeah, he actually brought me the script for the play and, you know, for a couple months was pushing me to read it. But, you know, adapting a play seemed, wasn't really what I was looking for at that point in time. Also, it was like, I, I was like, I can't see that, that being a thing that would fit with what I'm doing. But anyway, I, I read it and was like, fell in love with the material. And I think the biggest challenge was just being um, confident in, in the play to not, gut it and over stylize it and add so much that it was you know it became a film but it became something different the play really had something to it and i and i i believed and obviously the writer peter genoway had faith in it that we could add enough to it to bring it from the stage to screen but not go overboard and really rely on longer takes longer scenes dialogue to tell the story like a play so I, I would say the biggest challenge is just, you know, was having the confidence to do that, was having the confidence in the talent, the talent having confidence in themselves. And then, you know, when we finished the movie, we sent it out to festivals and it was sort of fingers crossed, you know, because we, we all loved it and loved the experience. So it had this, this you know, it all, I'll always love it, even if it didn't get into any festivals. But that was the, the biggest challenge was just the, the the confidence to believe that it could be could be what it is yeah that's great i mean with this being the world premiere I, i'm i am hoping for uh a, a very long and successful lifespan for this film i think it did uh, it, it's such a great film and so enjoyable that i would love for it to uh, i'd love to see it at, at other film festivals and to see people's reactions to it i mean it's gotten a pretty uh, a pretty good reception so far right yeah yeah it's been it's been yeah really really positive and i haven't seen um, anything negative except for cody no <laughs> <laughs> i might be too hard on it um but yeah, no no we've got we've got some more festivals coming up so it's gonna it's gonna pop up uh here and there in the next little while i think there's some announcements coming up or that it might have already happened so hopefully that that continues for the the rest of the year and then you know the hope is that we find some streaming service so everybody can see it mm-hmm yeah, a absolutely. Um, you know, so I, I mentioned uh, in in Inception earlier, which makes me think about Christopher Nolan films. And I'm only bringing this up because I, I stayed up very late last night trying to get to a theater to show uh, to see uh, Tenet, right? Oh, nice. um, and so, yeah, and, and, and with the current conditions of, um, you know, with COVID and everything, obviously the theatrical experiences has been stifled a little bit. Um, we're just now reopening theaters here in the States. Um, I, I want to know more, uh, I want to kind of hear your guys' um, how you feel about the theatrical experience because COVID is really pushing things to be at home, but there are creators who, who really value that theatrical experience. Um, and I guess this is a really a good question for Cody. Um, when it comes to filmmaking, do you have that theatrical experience in mind when you're making the film or are you just trying to make a good story. It's kind of my first question, and, and my second question is: how, is is how do you like? What do you guys think about that theatrical experience and how integral it is to the filmmaking industry? Um, well, yeah, I mean, from the get go, I, I really don't like from even development and the writing stage and and all of that. I'm I'm just concerned with story. And, mm -hmm. and I just, am all my, all my efforts going to make sure that, that, you know, it's the best story that, that I can, I can make it be. Um, but obviously um, having that theatrical, especially being in an audience at festivals is like, uh, there's, there's not, that's Eat. the best place to see it. After mm -hmm. that, it's, it's, it's different. It's not, not negative after that at all. It's, it's just different being in the room and, and seeing people's reactions and you can, you can kind of feel if the audience is into it. And, and again, it can go both ways, but you know, that, that feeling of watching it with somebody is, 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 I think is really important. And I hope, I hope it's not too long before we can kind of get things back to, back to normal. But again, also too, 
I have so much respect for what the streaming services have done for film too, because, you know, if you can get on them, you just get them out to so many more people. Mm. And, you know, it goes from making a movie in Canada where maybe a couple of people in Canada see it and a couple of people in the States to like now the world can. So, I mean, both have their, their advantages and disadvantages, but I do, I do feel like there's nothing, there's nothing like watching a movie in a theater. I agree. I mean, I, I think when you're talking about, you're talking about global distribution or domestic distribution when it comes to cinemas, you know, it's a, having the ability to look at something online anywhere in the world is, is a great factor, but I think we do have to protect our cinemas. Um, I've done some work in the past with Barco uh, Escape. I don't know if you remember Barco um, theaters when they were doing the 360 wrap around, they were still developing that. Um, it was a big push to get people back into the cinemas. And with COVID, they are taking a very big hit. But I think it's just time with everything um, in life to evolve and to grow and to, we accepted a subpar standard of living and we have been for at least two generations. And yes, technology has grown, but we as individuals have not. And I think now with everything, it's forcing us to make better business practices, to, to think out of the box, to utilize our technologies. And at the same time though, we can't lose sight of preserving community. Films are community. This is a community-based industry. Without community support, we couldn't make films. We couldn't generate content and we couldn't get articles um, because there wouldn't be a community that supported it. So in that regard, I think we need to, uh, I'm very hoping that we were able to go back very soon to to how we can just go to a movie theater and have the luxury to to be able to to go freely into places um but i think it's up to us to raise the standard of cinema and to raise the standard of of the arts and then that's what we're doing cody especially when it comes to arts and 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 the type of art that he's producing with black fawn and breakthrough and everyone it, it's it's really a, a family and that's what this industry is. Yeah, that's, that's great. And all of, all of what you guys are saying makes sense. And, and yeah, I, I, you know, I'm looking forward to us getting through this whole COVID situation in a very safe manner and, and returning back to um, a place where we can support our theaters and cinema and, and, um, and local businesses as well, um, safely, of course. Yeah, um, for sure. So, yeah. So uh, I'm I'm at the very last few minutes of this interview. Um, is there anything else you guys think that that people or audiences should know about the Oak Room before we sign off here? When's the next screening, Cody? <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, I should know this, right? <laughs> um, I I don't. I actually don't know what what is next, but there will be. Like there's a few more festivals coming up, so there's definitely going to be more chances to to watch it. And then, yeah, hopefully, hopefully, sometime at the end of this year, early next year, we'll sort of know where it where it's going to end up because you don't you never really know until it's kind of done its run. But mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, no, I, those were great questions. I feel like I got everything yeah. I wanted out. <laughs> Perfect. That's great. Well, I am certainly a, a proponent, and I will be raving about this film whenever I, I uh, see an opportunity for people to check it out. I'm, I'm excited for uh, other people to see it. I'm excited for it to be shared. And, uh, and yeah, the, the best of luck to you guys and the success of this, of this movie. I think it's really great. And um, yeah, I'm very happy that you guys were able to join me for this call. This was a wonderful discussion. Same here. For Thank sure, man. You. Thank you so much. Of course. Thanks. Hold on, guys. Let me stop the recording. Uh, stop. Okay, uh, did I hit it? More stuff.